Earth, over four and a half billion years old. Our home, and home to every creature known to mankind. 200,000 years ago, the world was a very different place. A few remnants of this prehistoric era still exist today. The Woodlouse, with its rigid, segmented, long exoskeleton and 14 jointed limbs. Their antennae are highly sensitive sensory receptors that detect invisible wavelengths. New research has brought to light just how fascinating these animals really are and how much more advanced they are than we ever imagined. Could these creatures hold the key to understanding the secrets of the universe? We're privileged to have with us here today an extremely high-ranking woodlouse who's kindly given up some of his time to give us, hopefully, a real insight into the lives of woodlice. This actual house was designed and built by a single woodlouse. Can you imagine his 14 legs working day and night? Fantastic. The more observant of you might notice how similar these buildings are compared to those built by humans. Whoa! This fella's going everywhere. Perhaps it's not so surprising how similar our architecture is when you get as close as this to these amazing creatures. I mean, look, look at how human he is. Look at how human his shell is. Look at how human his legs are. See how he runs. Three blind mice. When you observe these similarities, it's obvious that we are both, of course, great apes. A ferocious predator. It would take a squadron of woodlice under 10 seconds to decimate an entire herd of deer. When agitated, they expand. Their front two teeth can grow up to 17 times the size of their own body. These two teeth latch onto their prey and they don't let go. Although very close relatives to humans, the origins of the woodlouse are largely unknown. For centuries, man has debated these mysteries. Some say they arrived in spaceships, while other scholars argue they were made from stardust. Woodlice are actually made from stardust. These nocturnal crustaceans breathe through gills. This is why they're found in damp, dark places such as the armpits of larger animals, and of course, why they're colloquially known as pit twats. Next week, we're going to take a look at another very close relative of ours and one of the first fish to swim on land. It's of course, the pufferfish. See you next week. <laughs>